the day that the Lord has made and we are night now. So this is the night. Oh, yeah, it's Friday, isn't it? I'm on vacation, so I'm just. Anyways, God is good. Glory to God. Glory, glory. Are you expected tonight? Yes. Amen. Come and release your faith tonight. Glory. Um, God is good. This is the night that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Psalms uh, 24, it says, I will bless the Lord. I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praise. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take part. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name forever. Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, we just welcome your presence in this place, Father God. We welcome your glory in this place, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for the spirit of the Lord is upon this place tonight, and you will do mighty things tonight, Father God. You will move in the gifts of the spirit tonight, Father God. I pray that every eye will be open, that every ear will be open, Father God, that every heart be open to receive, Father God, what the spirit of the Lord is saying to us, Father God. We just trust you, you we just trust you tonight, Father God, and we seek your face, Father God. We bless your holy name. Lift up your hand and say, I worship you, Father God. I worship you in the spirit to and truth, Father God. No matter what I'm going through, Father God, I will lift up my voice and say, The Lord is good. The Lord is good to me.
Even before the foundation of the world, you knew we'd be here. You knew who would be here. You know what needs we'd be facing, what trials and tests. But you've got a plan. so grateful, Lord, is you don't have suggestions, you have solutions. And we thank you for that. You're a God of solutions. Thank you, Lord. Well, I wasn't going to take up an offering for the expenses of the meeting, but I just want to just turn it over to Brother Begley. I think we're in the place that we should. Sister uh, uh, Susie, uh, Brother Bigley's wife, uh, messaged us just a few minutes, moments ago, and she said, it's going to be a good night. And I messaged her back. I said, it's going to be a very, very good night. Amen? Amen. Is that all right with you? Just move right in, Brother Bigley? Or will you enjoy sitting there? <laughs> Praise your wonderful name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Just lift your hands up one more time. From your heart, tell him how much you love him. From your heart. Father, we love you so much. We love you so much. Because you first loved us. Thank you so much. He she should shut up a sucking. We worship you. We magnify your name. How precious is that name. How precious is the blood. How precious is your word. How precious is the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I was in Dallas, Texas two weeks ago. And I heard the voice of God. Audibly call my name. Dale! spoke to uh, Samuel. And he thought it was Eli called him. Don't go back to bed. Second time, go back to bed. Then he realized that's God calling him. He said, when he talks to you, son, I'm here, Lord. I'm here to answer. Tonight I want to ask you to surrender your entire being to the Lord. Just make a decision from here on out. It's all about Him and not about me. This afternoon I saw a vision. That's what prophets do. <laughs> we see visions. Not the television. Vision. I saw him sit here in this chair, speaking tongues. For the winds of change, the winds of change are beginning to blow. It shall sweep across the earth. This I want you to know. Revival shall break out in California. Then Alabama, then Oklahoma, then Calgary, then Toronto, and yes, New Brunswick. It shall break out and call in the heathens, the most ungodliest people on the earth. For you see, my, my table's spread now. There's so many Luke Christians. 
They're not even hungry. Some will reach out to the lost and the ungodly, and you shall see a great change. You'll look back in a year from now, and the only word you can say is, wow, a year from now. Wow. Wow. We're already in the age of the greatest move of God the world has ever seen, the final move. And yet many are still asleep. But those that are sensitive know that something's up. You can see what the devil's doing. He knows something's up. He's come out of the closet, brazen, not even trying to hide anymore. Blatant. And so it's now for time for the salt to be salty and the light to be bright. As the end of this year begins to close, what shall happen in 2025? <laughs> My body shall come alive in 2025. Not just survive, but come alive. Amen. At the close of the second month, February, the last few days, There'll be a shift in the heavenlies. Demonic activity that they, they're ruling right now, I shall cast them down. Yes. Hallelujah. You'll see a shift in the heavenlies. Yes. Before this is over, said the Lord of hosts, you'll see the armies of the Lord yes. prevailing from coast to coast. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm asking you, says the Spirit of God, for I'm speaking tonight directly to you. Allow my word to flow through you. Allow what I say tonight to never escape. But latch on to it. Hold on to it. Stand for it. Believe for it. And pray for the manifestation of it. For it shall be. But I want to use you. I don't want to hunt someone else down. I want to use you as a vessel of power to flow. Yes. So February, a shift shall come. You'll see the wars begin to subside. You'll see a great outpouring. The spirit shall raise the tide. The seas of revival shall flood. It'll be on the airways. It'll be on the evening news. Yes. You'll see dramatic miracles on your social media feed. Hallelujah. Cameras will be snapping all around the world, showing miracle after miracle after miracle. Why has it took so long, someone would say? Well, I've been preparing for this day. From the foundation of the world, the greatest event outside the resurrection of Jesus is the rapture of the church. It shall be glorious. It shall be triumphant. It shall be a triumphant par parade into the heavenlies. And the world shall see there'll be a vacuum in the earth. And fear shall rise. And religious people will fall on their face. And they'll realize what has happened. But you, said the Lord, I handpicked you to live in this time. So therefore, I must trust you. I didn't pick you to live in Moses' this time. I didn't pick you to live in John the Baptist's time. John the Baptist prepared the way for the coming of the Lord. I'm asking you to do the same. Prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. Amen. Well, isn't God good? Woo! Woo! I'd have come to church not even if I wasn't preaching. <laughs> isn't God good? Isn't God good? Glory, glory. Well, <laughs> the Lord wanted to preach a little tonight, so I, I just let him. It's his service. Thank you, Lord. Y'all ready for... You know, God.
God can preach. <laughs> he spoke a marvelous word to me this afternoon. I don't run around a lot. I don't socialize. I don't play golf. Golf's not the dumbest thing in the world. <laughs> Says a little ball, hit a little hole with a stick. Do it for exercise. Then you rent, rent your cart to ride in. <laughs> Tonight will impact your life. Mm. This message will register on your heart. Thank you, Father. We've been preaching on the anointing. The anointing. Tomorrow night's on the power. Next night's on the glory. You don't want to miss nair night. <laughs> the anointing is a heavenly materiality. It's tangible to the touch. It's the presence of God in manifestation. By God's design, the anointing is to break yokes that you seemingly can't get out from under. If I was a natural man, looking at the church in the natural realm, it seems so weak. It seems so, so frustrating. Can't even get their own people to come three nights in a row in most churches way up north. <laughs> Dedication and consecration is almost a dirty word. <coughs> God gave me a revelation. <coughs> How the devil operates. He operates like a bullfighter. He gets that dumb bull chasing a rag. Spends all of his energy thinking that rag is his enemy. The rag can't even hurt him. It's the person holding the rag. Mm -hmm. But every time he gets a person distracted, then that bullfighter is able to stick a dart into the bull until the bull is exhausted and dies. Satan shoots darts. But the shield of faith quenches all the fiery darts. Amen. So as you keep your faith shield up, Satan can't get to you. But he's, he's slick. He's a master of deception. He'll even get you looking at a better job. A prettier woman. A younger man. More money. He don't care how he distracts you. He's out to get you. Because you're an enemy. He's afraid of you, especially if you're full of the Word, full of the Spirit. He's afraid of you. Yes. You're liable to tear his kingdom down. Yes. So all he can do is move physical things around yes. to get you distracted. Mm -hmm. The law of focus. You'll always reproduce what you focus on. They took the calves to feed them, or took the cows and peeled the poplar rods. And so when the cows were eating their food, they saw spots day after day after day, and they produced spotted calves. The law of focus. It will pull you in the direction you're focused on. So the enemy likes to get someone offended. Well, they took a big love offering. Well, did you give anything? No. Then why get mad? Amen. <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> the devil doesn't care how he gets you, but he does it through focus. Then he, he, he steals <coughs> your authority to use against you. Because he has none. Right. I can prove it to you. Mm -hmm. If you're a sinner, and you're lost as a goose in a fog. And trust me, that's really lost. You hear me preach. And you come up here to get saved. All the devils in the hell have to step back and watch you get saved. Yeah. All of them. The devil himself cannot stop you when you make a quality decision. Somebody say amen. 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 So we got to learn 
how to cooperate, develop skill and knowledge and wisdom, you have to learn to recognize the devil. Then you have to learn to address the devil. And then, number three, <laughs> put him in his place. Oftentimes, we don't recognize him until we're halfway focused and over on his territory. Thank you for your enthusiasm. <laughs> recognize. <laughs> address. And put him in his place. You, you mean you want me to talk to the devil? He's been talking to you. You've probably heard his voice between 50 to 100 times in the last month. Yeah. Says some of the dumbest stuff. Dumb. I was standing at the tower, the Eiffel Tower in Paris, France, and that tower actually sways. The devil said, jump off. I said, you jump off. I'm doing fine. <laughs> he's stupid. <clears throat> but you know what he's learned? If he tells a lie long enough, somebody will believe it. Huh? Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. That's why you can't entertain very long his thoughts. Yeah. Grab them quick and cast them down. Yeah. Recognize. Don't, don't, don't send two or three days. I've seen people. One lady, bless her heart, she came up with Caroline and she said, Brother Dad, just crying, just bawling. She, she said, I, I lost Fluffy. I said, What? <laughs> I, I, I lost Fluffy. She said, Fluffy is my cat. I said, when did this happen? She said, be two years this October. I got a little righteous. I said, go to the stove and get you another cat. Don't spend two years in grief. Joy comes in the morning. Amen. Someone passes away. It's okay to grieve, but don't spend your whole life grieving. Grieving has no profit to it. Right. <coughs> we'll preach on the anointing. The anointing. Mm -hmm. What about the anointing? Well, let's start with 2 Kings, a classic of double portion. Mm -hmm. Double portion doesn't mean what most folks think it means. When Elijah was about to leave, now Elijah <coughs> didn't do everything perfect. Matter of fact, he only did one third of what God told him. He told him, anoint Hazel to be king over Syria, Jehu to be king over Israel, and not Elisha to stand in his place. He was actually a replacement. Well, the smartest thing you can do for your own victory is find your place in God. You know how many churches I know that the pastors don't even call to pastor? I don't care how hard the ear tries. <sighs> it can't see. It don't have the grace. When you find your place, you'll obtain the grace and you'll finish your race. If you don't find your place, you'll fall on your face because you're displaced. I thought that was good. <laughs> let's go back. So here, let's open the Bible. He went please to Second Kings. Put that on the screen for Second Kings two and nine. Double portion. Double portion anointing is not for everybody. It's for those in the ministry. Double portion anointing can be developed and increased. Now, every believer has an anointing. Every believer has an anointing abiding within them. In the Old Testament, nobody had an anointing body within them. Every believer now in Christ has an anointing of body within them. What was it? You've got him in there all the time. Yes. You need to learn to develop, draw out, be sensitive to that. Because you have a genius living inside of you and you don't take his counsel. A Christian that is in depression. Is not pulling up joy. A Christian that is full of angst is not pulling up patience. It's there 24-7. They're just not yielding to it. 
It's always quiet in Stone Gospel Church. I think I'll shake my leg a little. <laughs> Y'all look at me like I'm from another planet. I am from another planet. Called heaven. Amen. I'm on angel dust. <laughs> The prerequisite for him to receive this double portion, he said, you ask a hard thing. Next, I guess the next verse. You ask a hard thing, but if you if you see me when I go, was it hard for God? <laughs> no. Nah. It's hard for him because Satan's out to distract you. It's, it's challenging for you to stay focused on the things that's most important. And a hundred trillion years from now, you won't care who won the hockey tournament right, right. or the football game. What well, seems so important that we all go through phases. I went through my cowboy days, <laughs> looked like Texas Ranger, went through my motorcycle days. Huh? Now all I want to do is preach, study, and pray. I don't want to do anything else. Y'all don't get out much, do y'all? <laughs> you ask a hard thing. Hard thing. Elisha served Elisha. Elisha served Elisha 21 years. One of the greatest Dignified things you can do is be a servant. You may not get a lot of recognition in this life, but oh, you're laying up treasures in the next world. Jesus, if you want to be great, be a servant. So see, I'm here tonight serving you supper. If you sit it up, I'm going to crank it right back down. No spitting up. <laughs> Ask a hard thing. Now, some say that Elijah did eight. Elijah did 16. Elijah actually did one after he was dead. True. His foes in the sepulcher. There was a skirmish army, and the guy got killed. And they just throw him in the sepulcher there. And when he touched Elijah's, Elijah's bone, it raised him from the dead. Surely you got more anointing than a dead man's bones. The anointing will flow into flesh and bone. The anointing will flow into water. The anointing will flow into cloth. It will not flow into paper. It will not flow into metal, per se. Are you listening to me? In John, the fifth chapter, there's a pool of Bethesda. An angel would come down once a year and put in just a small measure. Now we're talking about measure, double portion measure, small measure. Christ had the spirit without measure, which he had all of it, inferring that you and I had the spirit by measure. You don't have it all. Every believer has the same measure of faith. Every believer has the same measure of inward anointing, the new birth anointing. That is your personal anointing to live by. We'll say a lot of things, answer a lot of questions. The anointing that comes on is can be developed and increased. The anointing that's within you cannot be increased, but you can become more sensitive and more skilled of drawing it out. Proverbs said, the counsel in a man's heart is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Sometimes it's just one word. They'll change your whole future. Amen. I got one amen. Amen. I know, quick, I get a hundred. <laughs> so if y'all don't get out of here, y'all must say amen a whole lot. I know amen. you're listening. I know you're listening. Hallelujah. So let's talk about the anointing that comes up on. In the Old Testament, only the king, the priest, and the prophet give you anointed. Now, occasionally, he would anoint someone like Gideon or Samson to do a, a job or a task to, to perform. But by and large, the population did not was not anointed. Was not anointed. But in the new birth, every believer is anointed. You see, your pancreas 
is anointed to produce blood sugar. Your heart is not. Your stomach is not. Your liver is not. Your feet is not. So you can only produce what body parts you are. So it would be wise for you to find out how God uses you, what body parts you are, and then you'll be successful in everything you do because, listen to me, the nose does not have to take smelling lessons. <laughs> it knows what to do. It's a nose. It knows. <laughs> Y'all need to catch up. <laughs> and so we're, we're, we're getting educated and knowledge and wisdom on how to draw up. Now, I'm going to say a lot of things that you need to hear, answer a lot of questions. I honor our predecessors. I honor our generals in the faith. But I, I learn from their successes. And I learn from their <coughs> failures. A double portion anointing doesn't mean twice as much per se. It means I have my own and I have some of my protege that I studied after. Mm -hmm. This afternoon the Lord said, and I've known this for a long time, but the Lord said to me this afternoon, you received a portion of Brother Kenneth e. Hagin's anointing. I've known it for a long time. Well, don't mean that I'm twice anointed. It means I have my own anointing, plus I have some of his. Now, I can develop this anointing that comes <laughs> on me by being more consecrated and more dedicated, and it can develop and develop and develop, and there's no limit to it. There's no limit to that. Are you listening to me? The anointing that lies within you is limited, but you can become skilled and developed and take it to the max. The problem is a lot of people who have it only come on them try to live on that anointing. Mm -hmm. And that anointing, you cannot live on it. It don't belong to you. It's not even for you. It flows through you for other people. That's right. Amen. The garden hose. The water that flows through the garden hose is not for the hose. That's right. <laughs> We're just a vessel for it to flow through. Right. The danger of most Preachers in the past tried to live on that anointing. Now, when you're under that anointing, you feel like Superman. When it lifts, you feel like yesterday, last week's dish rag. Yeah, preach over here. <laughs> so the double portion only is not for everybody. It's for those that have a full fit ministry or a ministry, ministry of singing, so forth. But you 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 can increase that as you study. Your predecessor, now, I was very fortunate to meet Brother Higgins a few times, but I, I, I was I was 32 out of 36 to camp me, read the most always, most of the most always sermon. I could preach some of his sermon as good as he did. Don't shut me down, but I'm preaching really. I, I read most of his books, but he laid hands on me and something was imparted to me. That's according to Romans chapter 1 of the verse 11. I long to see you, that I may impart something to you. I'm going to talk about face-to-face. -face. Thank God for technology. Thank God for live streaming. But nothing takes the place of being under the anointing in the service. That's Amen. Right. Amen. Jeremiah said, Amen. chapter 1, he said, don't look at their faces. Go ahead and preach it anyhow. I can tell what you're receiving by the, the look on your face. <laughs> so I learned not to look at you. I used to look right through you. <laughs> then Paul said in Romans 1, I long to see you. He's writing him a letter. He had never seen them face to face in Rome. He longed to see them. In Thessalonians, that's the first book in the New Testament, he wrote, he said this, I want to see you face to face that I may supply what's lacking in your faith. Mm. Well, wait a minute. That sounds like an oxymoron. He said in Romans, every believer has the same measure. How can something be lacking if you have the same measure? Everybody got 10 gallons. How can something be lacking in your faith if you got 10 gallons of faith? Well, how many you like to know? Amen. Amen. Send me $1,000 in the mail. <laughs> I'm sorry, the, man, the prophet left the man just stepped out. He didn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> in the book of Acts, he said, Have y'all received the Holy Ghost since y'all believe? They said, Well, 
why, why are we at it? It hurt no Holy Ghost. You can't believe in something that you haven't had preached to you. So therefore, it's lacking. If you had not heard the frustrating message, then you can't believe for frustrating, therefore it's lacking. If you, can't, if you haven't heard the message on the Holy Ghost, therefore you're lacking faith in that area, because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of are you, are you following? Yeah. Yeah. And so, in the next year, revelation knowledge is going to flow. <clears throat> Last year, God did his best to have an outpouring at Asbury College. I didn't get to go, but my, my grandson did. And, and y'all met Jody, my wife's son-in-law. No. Amen. My wife's son-in-law. <laughs> Work with me, <Kate. laughs> I called them on the phone and I said, what's it like? They said, Bethel, it's like God is hanging in the air. His presence is so tangible. It's like it's in the air. It was shut down because of parking. Yeah. Yeah. Why didn't God choose this headquarters or that large church? He wanted somewhere where man wasn't special. Yeah. Where man had no agenda. That's right. Where man couldn't control or run. Because right. this last little gun is going to blow people away. I'll get to that in a minute. I can't hardly wait to preach it myself. He likes side beside me. Three people in the back row. And so, and so we, if I say I love Brother Dale. I love Brother Dale. Uh, it's kind of weak. <laughs> so let's turn, if you would please, let's go to uh, uh, 1 John 2 and 20. 1 John 2 and 20. First John, we're talking about the tangible anointing. Yes. See, you can wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and talk in tongues. Yes. You have to sleep. Yes. You pull it up. Right. Learn to draw out what God put in you. Okay. You'll get better at it. I can tell you, I was sitting in Montreal <laughs> Airport. I was just anointed, sitting there as I'm anointed right now. Yes. I've been under the anointing since June of this year. I mean, day and night, day and night, day and night, day and night. I can tell there's a tangible anointing. Now, you might not can tell, but I certainly can. Thank you for your old money and thunder some balls. <laughs> you have an option. Same word as anointing. You have an option from the Holy One, and you know all things. Have you met someone that thought they knew all things? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What's this talk about? The anointing on the inside of you that you received in the new earth knows everything about you, about your call, yes. about your anointing, yes. about your place. Yes. Elijah could not anoint Elisha except he was called in that same office. Mm -hmm. Only God can call, only God can anoint, only God can qualify. Mm -hmm. Too many times religion calls someone or people call themselves, yeah. no amount of zeal, no amount of zeal will place the call. That's right. Are you listening to me? Yeah. So a person has to get honest with themselves. I know people that are struggling, and the reason they're struggling is because they're not called to that office. Mm -hmm. But they want to be something God didn't call them. I, I gotta hurry. But you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. You know. He knows everything about what you're supposed to do, what you're supposed to be, how you're supposed to function. See, I, I know how God uses it. I know. I, without sounding braggadocious, I carry an anointing of prophecy. I carry the laying on of hands. We're, we're, we're more successful when we lay hands on people, and I don't even know what's wrong with them. If I stop and talk to them, it'll pull me out of that deeper flow. When I'm under that deepest flow, within 20 feet of me, you'll either laugh, fall down, jump, run, holler, or cuss. <laughs> Trust me, I've had to cuss me. <laughs> Amen. Brother Hagen had that. I got part of that from him. Now, I'm not fully developed as he was. 
but I got some of it. Yeah. And the reason that me and Brother Matley flow so well together is because he also got some yeah. of Brother Hagin's spirit. Yeah. If you listen to him talk in tongues, he, he sounds just like him. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. He also got some of Lester Summerall's spirit. I didn't, but he did. Yeah. So he's ahead of me in that area. Yeah. <laughs> but we flow together because we complement, because we're on the same page. So John 7, 38 said, I'm just going to quote you, out of your spirit flows running water. The King James says, out of your belly, yeah. rivers of living water. Mm -hmm. But actually, it's out of your spirit. You determine and develop and release what flow you do. God does it. You do. It's put in there, which helps you to open the channel. Because you're a channel for the Spirit of God to flow through. Amen. So we say amen. amen. So we have this unction of the Holy One. You know all things. He inside. Can I just stop in the middle for a few minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Most people's problems are self-induced. Yeah. Yeah. They're not faithful to church. Not faithful to tithing. Huh? So we come up for prayer, for prostrating. I go lay hands on I said, do you not pay tithes? No. You go to church? No. But you want God to bless you? Yeah. <laughs> Get a job. Keep it. Nope. Start some tea. Had a pastor take a week. But I think we're struggling financially. I said, what, what's wrong? I said, well, does your church pay tithes? He said, does our church pay tithes? Well, I hadn't even thought about it. How can you preach it and not do it yourself? <coughs> See, a lot of people think because they preached it, they're a doer. But just because you preach it, you can quote it, you can write it upside down. Don't mean you did it. I believe in exercise. I drive by the gym twice a day. Once they stopped and looked in the window. I got so full of zeal, I went inside and I got me a membership. I believe in exercise. Now I go there three times a week and watch people exercise. You never get full by watching someone else eat. It's amazing. It's amazing. I was in Canada. I got a shock today. Y'all's money will shock you. I came home last week with $32,000 Canadian, put it in my bank, and they take out $8,000 today, almost $9,000. I like to say that again. How much money? $32,000. $32,000. $32,000. And they took out almost $9,000. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. So it's quiet. It's called gospel church. <laughs> I'm the word double up comes to mind. <laughs> Just kidding, but flatten up is running that way. <laughs> and so you got to watch because you hear it, you think you're doing it. Yeah. I honor all Roberts. I didn't get anything from him in partition. But let me tell you about Laurel. He's one of my heroes. He actually sold newspapers in my hometown, a town called Atoka, when he was a boy. He was a basketball player. He passed out playing basketball with tuberculosis, bleeding. And the uh, process of that, he had a healing gift. God said, take it to your generation. He did that. He did that. He prayed for so many people over the years. He developed calcium deposit on his shoulders yes. and had to have an operation. Yes. Here is great faith healer. Why? He's the water hose. Yes. It wasn't for him. That's right. You can't live on what flows through you. That's right. Five-fold ministry or the lowest, youngest saint still has to learn to live on the anointing that abides within. I'm going somewhere. Look at verse 27 now. 
Verse 27. Y'all get anything? Yeah. Yes. Verse 27. But the anointing which you have received about in you, you need not any man to teach you. Then why do we have teachers? What he's saying is this. If I'm preaching and teaching, there's something inside of you will tell you, he's right, he's right, he's right, he's right. Yes. Yep. Yep. The anointing inside of you teaches to discern right from wrong. The anointing will teach you. He'll have you to put all the shopping, shopping carts back in order. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> He'll have you pick up paper off the toilet ground floor that you dropped. Yeah. Chewing gum wrappers. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. See, he goes everywhere. The little things you don't think is important. See, I'm not downing our predecessor, our protege, but some of their doctrine was off the wall. But they had great success in the giftings because the anointing, the gifts and callings are without repentance. You can't, you don't have to be perfect for God to use you. Yeah, that ought to be encouraging yeah. to most of us. Yeah. And so he said here, about it in you that you need not even to teach you, but the same anointing that teaches you of all things it is true and is no lie, even as he hath taught you, you shall abide in him. Now here's my point. He will teach you from level to level to level because most of the blessings of God are contained in maturity. Yes. There's four levels to the Word of God. There's milk, sincere milk, meat, and strong meat. When you're carnal and you're a baby and I preach meat, people go, I didn't get that. I didn't get that. But see, people need to grow up. 18 month old baby. I can explain to them how to invest, compound their money annually. They heard every word I said. They ain't got a clue what I meant. Yeah. So if this is over your head, you need to chew a little longer. <laughs> Sincere milk is a hunger that will cause you to grow. Amen. So this wave is coming. People are going to be so hungry for God because the world has no answers. The hunger is going to return. You, you know something God told me? He said, I deal with every human on the earth every day. Yes. Yeah. Wow. He deals with every human every day. Yes. Many of them do not respond. That's right. So you can hear a great sermon, waste of time, unless you respond. Yeah. I'm trying to hurry. So it only teaches <laughs> us, it trains us, it shows us how to operate. In here, we, you, you, I, I learned how to cooperate with, with the anointing. And, and, and some of them trying to get you to do something else. I, I've seen Jesse do it. I've seen different ones do it. And, 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 and they'll say, especially they'll crowd of five or six thousand people, they'll say, uh, uh, if you have any kind of heart trouble. Now, don't come up here if you have back trouble. God said heart trouble. Why? Because it will, it will quench the flow. God is like a specialist. There's certain nights, it's arthritis night. Mm -hmm. Other night, it's, it's back, get back seal. Other night, it's, it's heart trouble. Are you following me? Yeah. Yeah. So we need to learn to be sensitive. You see, when you don't come night after night, the very night you didn't come, he might have called your number. Yes. Yeah. Let, me, let me hurt. Let me hurt. And so, William Brown, he's been dead long enough. Now I can learn, honor him. He brought great light in the word of knowledge, yes. word of wisdom. Yes. Yet he, he got all home to teach. Yes. Brother Hagin, the one went to him and said, Brother, you're the best we ever saw. Yes. And words of knowledge and, and so forth and, and miracles. No. But when it comes to teaching, you can't call home. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Now, that sounds like insult, doesn't it? No. He said, yeah, but I want to teach. That's right. Most people... They're not called, and they're teaching. Don't know enough to teach. So you can hurt people. You can cheat people. Yeah. Now, being raised, I was raised, I was raised Pentecost, uh, back in the southern part of Oklahoma, down in Oklahoma. <laughs> you couldn't dip two or smokes. You couldn't go to a movie. Now, you look twice at a woman, you're going to hell. You sorry, dog. <laughs> I'm going to 
remember the first camp meeting. I went to Brother Hayden. And there's a lady sitting on the platform. She had, had a dress on, and she had her legs crossed like that. And you can see her kneecaps. Wow. Ah! Jezebel done got on the platform. <laughs> I, I punched my brother. She has worked the service. And all of a sudden, Vicki Jamerson got up and began to praise the Lord. And the power of God fell. And I said, excuse me. I'm sorry, excuse me. I saw lightning I strike me. I didn't know until I was in my thirties. Because Pentecostals always taught that whether you're going to be in a flood or a famine or a Red Sea or the lion about to chew your feet. And then God will swoop in and rescue you. I didn't know that God would bless you with money in the bank. I thought you had to be starving or on fire or about to drown. <laughs> so wrong teaching can hold you back and rob you. So every church service, you're either going in the rapture or you're going to hell. Yeah. Every church, you're going somewhere. <laughs> Are you listening to me? And then I heard the word of faith message. And I thought, ha, ah, could that be true? Same here. That I'm righteous? Yes. That he made me righteous? Yes. And that he, he's not ready to knock me in the head if I just mess up? Hallelujah. Best thing I ever heard. Yep. So I went after it tooth and toenail. Yes. But I see how wrong teaching robbed me. Yes. Somebody say amen. Amen. And so, William Branham got teaching off. He was told you're going to die early. Yes. He got killed in a car wreck. Yes, in the highway, he's laying there. His wife is tore up. He's all tore up. He takes his hand over her, touches her. She's just leaving. Awesome. Wow. Just before he dies, the anointing on him. Got your wife here. Wow. And he died. Amen. Why? It's not yours. Yeah. It's for the other person. Mm -hmm. See, what I carry is for you. Yeah. I didn't come here for me. I come here for you. Thank you. So, a couple of years ago, I got a little caramel. Don't look so holy. Pack it in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I said, Lord, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm getting close to 70. How about me retiring and my wife get a job? <laughs> and I stay home and eat, eat marshmallows and watch the Beverly Hillbilly and Andy Griffith. <laughs> Maybe they'll go on the He said, son, I'm asking you. My people need to hear what you've learned in 50 years of ministry. Yes. Will you do it for me? Yes. I'll do it for me. I'll do it for him. Yes. So I'm not here for him. But I know what I carry. Thank you, Lord. When I lay hands on people, the power flows in them. Yes. They've got to learn to make sure faith with it. Yes. They believe they receive, they'll have it. Yes. You may take a day or two, may take a week. Don't let the devil talk you out of it. Yeah, right. Let's jump over to Jack Cole. Yes. The body of Christ has been robbed. Yeah. Had one of the greatest gifts of faith any man ever had. Reach up and grab goaders off his face and throw them on the floor. Yep. Grab your crutch and kick them out Monday. <laughs> Hit you by the shoulder, pick you up out of a wheelchair, and kick the wheelchair out Monday. Yeah. Great gift of faith. Mm -hmm. Other brethren told him, but you need to judge yourself over money mm -hmm. and over food. Because yes. he'd do a great miracle mm -hmm. and receive an offering off that miracle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That ain't the way you do it. You see, he would display the power of God and then try to draw a miracle, money off that miracle. Yeah. And he would pray for people to 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. So you can have great zeal, but it'll take you home before you time. Yes. We just lost a great word of faith preacher. By his own admission, his last sermon, he said, I'm just wore out. Yes, sure you can't violate natural law. That's right. 
you have to rest and take care of this temple. Yeah. You just think, well, you're Superman, but you can't live on that anointing. Mm -hmm. Even preachers have to go back and trust and believe and rely on the anointing that lies on the inside of you. Yes. That becomes on you. Sometimes it's powerful. Shake the building, but you can't live on it. No. Yeah. You get in trouble trying to. Because after a while, you'll sew your coat and think everybody ought to fall. <clears throat> you get to where you're on display and you have to be careful with that. That's not yours. Yeah. Yeah. That's for the people. Right. Mm. You don't own it. Yes. It may flow through you, but you don't own it. So the double portion comes when you study after someone mm -hmm. and they leave the earth. Mm -hmm. They leave the earth. But their anointing don't leave. No. And so you get a portion of that. So not everybody qualifies. But everybody qualifies for the anointing of the within. Every believer, every believer has that. Yes. Are you listening to me? And the rules apply to both. They develop the same way. <laughs> Dedication, consecration, and focus. Mm -hmm. So when he knew what he was talking about, you ask a hard thing. Mm -hmm. How can Elijah call fire down? And the next day, run from the Avon lady. <laughs> How can he do that? Because that anointing comes and it lifts. And it comes and it lifts. But we as believers, we can have this anointing all the time. I have literally walked into restaurants. The guy said, You're full of the Holy Ghost. I said, Uh huh. <laughs> I've had people ask about me at a service station. Who, who is that guy? Who is that guy? The guy in the county said, Oh, he's a preacher. I know him something. <laughs> See, you carry something flows out of you. Yes. And you're in charge of the flow. Yes. And it can flow a little drip, or you can turn on the full faucet. It's up to your dedication and your consecration. So let's go to a Canadian. <laughs> Amy Simple McPherson yes. had more miracles than Hagen, mm -hmm. Allen, Brown, mm -hmm. Jacko put together. Whew. Whew. Amy Simple McPherson didn't even really know she was called to preach until her husband died. Out of the sickness. She was quiet in the gospel church. Mm -hmm. She broke every rule. Had short hair, wore makeup, wore jewelry, wore a fancy dress, broke every rule of the Pentecostals. <coughs> But they could not deny the miracles. Had so many miracles in L.A., California, mm -hmm. you couldn't even rent an ambulance. <laughs> they was all booked up for months. Wow. The ambulance drivers got the betting on who would proceed. I believe the reception was 95% of everybody she prayed for. Wow. We haven't seen anything like that. But we will. What God did when he was going the wrong direction, he stepped in and turned it. He's about to turn it again. He's about to turn it again. So in the book of Acts, we have a man named Peter. He wasn't perfect. He's a little racist. A little hypocritical. Wouldn't eat when the Jews was around. But when the Gentiles was there by themselves, he would piggy holy goofy sound. <laughs> he would fail the old shit. <laughs> but before he was corrected, he walked down the street and his shadow yes. touched people. Yes. Mm -hmm. And everyone was healed. Now, you know in a crowd, you've got goofballs. Yes. A 
lady said the other day. Well, who gave the Apostle Paul the right to tell me how to live? Oh, no. How can you be so stupid and still breathe? <laughs> Close me away. Who gave a pot to fall? Right, tell me how to live. <laughs> so he walked down the street in that perimeter, that radius, the anointing flowed out of him, and they were all healed. Oh. Let me go back in time. And God will give us a photograph of what he's going to do. When he brought him out of Egypt, when he takes us out in the rapture, mm. just before he took them out, nobody sick mm. and nobody broke. Mm. He brought them forth with silver and gold and not one feeble one among them. Oh, out of three million people, yeah. nobody broke and nobody sick. Uh, yeah. oh, now right now, half the church is on medication. The other half wish to God they were. <laughs> oh, no. I'll take I'll take mutual edge, I don't care. <laughs> Do you know I come from an era <coughs> when people in the church didn't know how to go to doctors? I'm not against doctors. If you don't have some faith, you better go, you're gonna die. Yeah. But little by little, we begin to trust more and more and more on the arm of the flesh. That's about to change. Yeah. There's a few of us that get so stirred up, so hungry for this last little God, we will not be denied. Yeah. So we say amen. amen. And so it's been prophesied by Ed Dufresne, which is a prophet, a prophet is a seer. We see into the future. Brother Hagin, different ones, said this last revival will be a combination of all revivals put together. Amen. Yes. Found the Zeus's tree, spotlighted, talking in tongues. Yes. In the hidden way, God spotlighted healing. In the charismatic way, God spotlighted the teacher's office. We have been taught for the last 30. He's getting us ready. Because this one is not going to subside. It will not end. It will not stop. Once it gets rolling, there'll be services where the cloud will come in and the ministers will not stand and be able to stand. And everybody healed and everybody delivered. Nobody go on sick. No ailments, no broken bones, no nothing. Everything. See? You know why? It's a snapshot. You, in the Old Testament, the outer court, yes. that's your body. Yes. The inner court, that's your soul. Yes. But inside your spirit is the holiest of oh. holies. <coughs> we carry the very presence of God everywhere oh, we go yes. and have a right to draw on it. Oh, yes. He's a present help in a time of need. Now it's time to develop skillful knowledge and cooperation. Yes. How he wants to flow. Yes. Every service has a plan. Yes. Every service. If we miss that plan, we miss his fullness. Yes. Oftentimes, Brother Hagin said, I only got 40%. They said, well, why don't you go to 100? He said, I can't unless the people will go with me. That's right. You see, the spoken word is affected by the hearer. If you come to church, you've been fussing and arguing. People do that way up north. <laughs> you be surprised how people bring to church. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. oh, there's yeah. times I can see the cares of the life of this life on people. I can see depression on people. I can see melancholy on people. Yes. I'm in a service in Missouri. Lord <coughs> comes up. She had traveled. She came there for healing for her daughter or niece. She was so sincere. She had traveled two or three hundred miles. And that night, she slept on someone's floor to come to church that next day. She comes in there, rambunctious, 
used to cry in the Lord. I said, sister, sister, calm down. God's still on the throne. I had to get her out of her soul, get her out of her emotions to get her over in the spirit. She brought all that trouble, all that care with her. Yes. People bring grief to church. So as we learn not to accept those things, then the child will get more pure. You're already pure in your spirit. Yes. I'm talking about your soul. You'll learn not to yield to it. You won't bring your troubles to church. Yes. Are you listening to me? Yes. We'll learn to catch him, yes. recognize him, address him, and put him down. Right. Amen. Right. amen. I said, amen. amen. That way you're operating, cooperating with God. <coughs> Jesus did it so accurately. He said, Satan, it is written. It is written. Get thee behind me. Now, I implore you, find your place. So many people should be going to church here. Yes. They got out of their place. People without a shepherd. That's your biggest problem. Yes. He said, the people without a shepherd get weary and go astray and faint. Yes. The anointing of the pastor affects your entire life more than any other anointing. Yes. My job is to come in here, get him fired up. Yes. Mm. Work with me, people. <laughs> get you fired up. Get everybody fired up. But I'm, but I'm leaving in a few days. But he stuck with you. <laughs> I thought that was good. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> Brought them forth with silver and gold. And all they did was eat a dead goat. And here we are eating the living lamb. Mm. Jesus is the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. I talked Sunday on greater works <coughs> couldn't be done because of lack of honor. I'm not putting these people down. I honor these people. Amos Sigma Fairson, Jack Cole, they, they, they blazed the trail. One of my favorites is, is Marie Whitworth Edder. One of my favorites. She has such tremendous meetings. See, today people will book you for revival for a Sunday morning. She went to Denver, Colorado, being the largest auditorium, home 10,000 people. First night she had 18. 18? Yeah. You want 18 people looks at the auditorium, the whole 10,000? Looks like a speck. <laughs> she didn't quit. No. Within just a few days, there's so many people that would hide in the rafters so they get a seat the next night. Mm. Thousands and thousands. Yet she believed, I think six out of her seven kids died. And she believed that God took them because he wanted her for himself. She had very little word knowledge. Yes. Very little. I'm going to quote my basketball coach. We just played basketball. I was a solid dog. <laughs> he told us a story how this little guy got beat up by this big guy. And the little guy goes off and learns karate. And come back and whoop the big guy. They said, what the big guy knows karate? <laughs> What's that guy doing preaching? Just hold you later. <laughs> Not only will we be gifted, we will have word level. We'll have the knowledge of the word and the Holy Ghost. Not just word people, mm. but Holy Ghost people. Mm. Schooled in both arenas. Mm. So we'll be the ones that know karate yeah. and we're the big guy. Yeah. Well, I thought that was good. Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. Did y'all hear anything tonight? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So tonight I want to I wanna lay hands on you. I just come from Rock Lavish. We laid hands on people, I think, almost every night. <laughs> almost every night, everybody got slain in the spirit. Night after night after night. The Lord said, there's nothing wrong with that. He said, the more they get slain, the deeper they go. Amen. The more they get slain, the deeper they go. The more they get slain. See, a lot of people are against that. And I, you know, and then some people, it, it, it doesn't do phony stuff. 
but it don't negate the real. That's right. So Romans 1, 11, put that on the screen before I finish. I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift so you can be a hot dog. <laughs> no, no, no. Romans 1, 11, Romans 1, 11. He said, I long to see you may, may impart some spiritual gift that to the end you might be established. The church world is so unsettled. I've had people book me and cancel me in the same day. It's amazing how flimsy people's word is. Yes. I was flying into Toronto. And I had to depend on a pastor to pick me up. I just call Uber. Y'all have Uber, do y'all? Yes, we do. Y'all have Uber? Most of them up north. You can't depend on them. Will something come up? I couldn't make it. Well, the Bible teaches us to swear to our own hurt. Yes. If you say you'll do it, unless God do it, the hair of the devil. Amen. Stay with your words. Stay. If your word don't move you, it won't move God. That's right. If your word won't move you, it won't move the devil. <laughs> I want to see you. Why not see you? There's something about that personal. Thank God for streaming live when you can't get here. You can get a few, but you can't get the fullness unless you're in the sermon. Amen. See, that I may impart some spiritual gift to you, but then you may be what? Established. Mm -hmm. Brothers, we ever needed established Christians. Yes. Amen. amen. I said amen. 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 John, do you think of that? Yes. 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 Oh, yes. Was it John Mark that worked with Paul? Yes. He got a little rough. He said, I'm going to the house. <laughs> but later on, he straightened up. And Paul said, bring you back. He's good. Yeah. It's amazing having people shout with you, run with you, holler with you. But let, let trouble hit. And I'm out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. We need some people to just stay with it, stay with it. Don't you know that Elisha had his own company? Had his own employees. He was the boss. And for 21 years, he poured water on the man of God's hands, washed his dishes, washed his clothes, and served him. Yeah. But the other prophet said, the spirit of Elijah is now on Elisha. He got a portion of it. You can get a portion of the protege you study under. Amen. Amen. I said amen. 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 Well, if you want an impartation, just stand your feet and we'll lay hands on you. <laughs> I can tell you're over all the way on Be as smart as the people at the pool. Run, get in the water. Run, get in the water. Come on up here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, if you fall under the power, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine. If you feel something, that's fine. If you don't feel something, that's fine. Don't gauge God by your senses. Don't gauge God by your senses. Amen. If they see the light. I need my ushers to really watch. Really watch me and really watch the people. Well, sometimes when I lay hands on them, the power goes in them. It may be two or three minutes before they fall. And so you need to just stay on your toes. And everybody, all I'm asking you to do is one simple thing. When we lay hands on you, believe you receive. That's all you need to do. Believe you receive. Don't gauge it by the fluttering of your heart. Or the first next thing goes down. Just believe you receive. And guess what? You shall have. Let me get a little deeper. Say to me again, Lord. Masu kusu treze. Meshu kusu trala basa tina nele plebe dusu trana. Yeshon grain ding rama baba kasa. Young man in the back, are you saved? Are you saved? Would you come here, please? Thank you, Lord. Maha si kete. Kasu som grene vina kasa kata. You stand beside me, brother. Stand beside me. And move when I move. If I start to go down, you hold me up. 
<laughs> I'm expecting. <laughs> I didn't say I'm frightened. I'm just expecting. Oh, see, Kisha, bro, see. Eshito branda na na ta si kete. Feshiro so so branda ti ki pebe. Eshito na dono sa ka ti ki. Here comes again. In Jesus' name, receive. In Jesus' name, receive. Ha 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 ha. In Jesus. Hey, she ma 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 kata. Yield to it. Yield to it. Hey, 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 Oh, she made the most sick hit. Oh, oh, oh. Sister Naomi, I want you to take some pictures. The world, the, the God said the world needs to see. The world needs to see. In the name of Jesus. Oh, she made the most sick hit. 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 You should go deep, deep, deep into the things of God. Yeah. And pull out miracles. Your heart trap, your heart trap, your heart trap. I'll be able to flow. I'll be able to flow. Your heart trap, your heart trap. Ha 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 ha. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Ha 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 May she call that? May she call Brady hit it. This is how drunk we go at. Let's get the big boy. Shabahata, 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 Shabahata. In Jesus' name, take it off. May she call Hoshine. Master Kite. Master Kite, I'll come to you. You ready? Oh, get ready, get ready, get ready. He shivered in the attack of a heart. In Jesus' name. Just you will get a healing. I shall not let a Makaya. In Jesus' name. Come here, my friend. But she keeps any little woman in Shandana Mamahai. In Jesus' name. Master Kite. Master Kite. Master Kite. Master Kite. Master Kite. You need a dose of the Holy Ghost. Tell you about halfway scared of me, ain't you? I don't blame you. Ha 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 Joy, joy, joy. I anoint you with all of gladness. You shall be happy all the days of your life. Receive it now. In 30, 30, 30. There's the power. There's the power. Oh! Oh! Take it all. You need it. You need it all. You need it all. Ish no me. Ha, ha, ha. Ish no come to her. Moho, she won sanda. You got, oh, you got the dancer in your feet. Oh, you got the dancer in your feet. In Jesus' name, victory. Victory is yours. All you got to do is dance. Dance, 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 dance. There you go, there you go, there you go, there you go. <laughs> we got a dancer in the house. Did I get you sick or you a tourist? Masa, keep the hand. You stand there, brother. Ha, ha, ha. Let's get the ushers. Ushers did a double for you. But you serve. Hey, the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Teach to brass. Teach to brass. There it is. There it is. There it is. Take it off, son. Take it off. Take it off. Oh, Shiva Santa. Ha. 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 And the Spirit of the Lord shall come on you in waves of glory. In waves of glory. I see you at the breakfast table. And in between bites, all you do is cry. And say, oh, Lord, you're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. 
and then you'll eat, and then you'll go into the other room and sit down, and then you'll worship God. The Lord will not leave you alone. <laughs> the spirit of worship shall be on you. Shiva Hasata. Did we get you, brother? <laughs> We're saving the best for last. <laughs> <laughs> All I ask of you, saith the Lord of hosts, decide tonight to concentrate and dedicate like you've never done it before. Step out of the boat and be abnormal. Be a Jesus fan. All the days of your life. There's the anointing. There's the anointing. See, it's working right now on the inside. It's working on the inside right now. The power is flowing through you. The power is flowing to you. Evil to it is yours. In Jesus' name. Well, isn't God good? <laughs> I feel like a lone ranger. Isn't God good? Amen. Say you need prayer. Oh, I need an extra hand. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. I'm going to get up. I'm so heavy. I can't sit down. All I want to do is worship you. All I want to do is praise you. All I want to do is magnify you. Your heart's desire. Your heart shall see, see, be set on fire. When you see, there's times it will just ring and ring and ring. It'll resound and resonate through the building. The power shall flow as you sing, as you go. Well, glory. <laughs> what am I going to get you? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, divine impartation, whatever he needs, grant it, Father. Grant it in Jesus' name. Well, give the Lord a good shout, everybody. Hallelujah. Oh, you, 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 you got your You got your word. Well, isn't the Lord good? He's excellent. Oh. At least he's in La La Land. <laughs> Glory. Thank you, Father. Jack Daniels, Thank marijuana, ain't got nothing on us. I'm hiring a cat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have a hangover. Thank you, Father. For the Spirit of the Lord shall come on you. It shall stay on you for 17 days. You'll feel a trembling in your belly. Mix your faith for the God's doing the work. Mix your faith for the God's doing the work. You're so familiar with, 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 the, with, with, with the problems. Now get familiar with the answer, saith the Lord of hosts. <laughs> 17 days, you mark it down. 17 days, you'll tremble under the power of God. And at the end of 17 days, it's your choice, saith the Lord of hosts. Well, isn't God good? Yeah. Give the Lord a good shout, everybody. Hallelujah! Well, sound like a Baptist shout to me. <laughs> Can we get a Pentecostal shout? Hallelujah! Do you realize we only have four more nights? I know. Oh. <laughs> Where's it going to? Two more nights. Tomorrow night, <laughs> tomorrow night is the power. Uh, the next night is the glory. Thursday night, I'm not believing the rapture. I'm not sure what the... And the Lord could change it. That's, that's what our plans are. Praise you, Lord. I keep hearing this in my spirit. It's time for people to do something big in the financial realm. Hallelujah. Amen. Do something big. I'm not bragging. If the Lord would let me, I'd just leave it alone. But he wants to make an example. He came to me in a dream and gave me the figure $10,000. You know what it is to get $10,000 out of a preacher? It's called a miracle. <laughs> This is about two months ago. So I began to believe for that type of money. To be able to give. Not to hold up to give. And so I was in a little town called Fallon, Canada. And 
And one night, 14,000 came in. One offering. The pastor took it. I didn't take it. But we measure that. That's about, about $10,000. And so we gave Pastor five the to honor him and honor the church. So I did that. Here's a, here's a thing he gave me. He said, he said, words pay respect. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Thank you. That shows respect. But substance shows honor. Wow. Substance shows honor. Mm-hmm. If you think I'm here for your money, don't give me anything. That is the kind of money I want. I couldn't wait to get here mm-hmm. to give it to him. Amen. I couldn't wait. Yeah. I was so excited about doing it. Lord. We need to learn to let that part of us rise up. Amen. If you don't, when trouble in the world hits, you become a hoarder. Yeah. Yes. Dangerous. Learn to be generous. Learn to be generous. I remember when I couldn't leave a waitress a dollar tip. I was Pentecostal. I gave pennies. <laughs> a Pentecostal. <laughs> the Lord moved on me. I was in Tennessee probably 10 years ago. <clears throat> and I, I gave the waitress a, a big tip. My wife was there. We were sitting there talking. And I, yeah, I, I, I cut up the people. That's just, I just cut them. And uh, I said, you better take this before I change my mind. <laughs> she said, oh, thank you, sir. I said, my husband just got killed a week ago. Wow. Mm-hmm. I've got three kids to raise. Mm-hmm. See, God knew. He moved. So I blessed her. Wow. It's amazing. You don't know what other people's going through. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Don't judge them. You don't know their heart. Amen. Right. You don't know the living conditions they're in. But I have decided. I'm going to be gracious yes. and generous yes. the rest of my life. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I said amen. amen. So now as you give your offering to our ministry, just make the check out to uh, the church. We pray over Father, just one word we said tonight, if they will take it and measure it, hearing it with great emphasis, you said they'll get it the way they hear it. They can be casual, or they can be sincere, or they can show you some dedication <coughs> and honor you tonight in their giving. And so, Father, I ask you to deal with each individual what you'd have them to do concerning propelling this ministry into the future faster and further in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Oh, sure, you go ahead and wait on the people. Just make you check out to the church. <coughs> What's tomorrow night's sermon? Power. Power. What's the next night? Glory. 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 Yeah. So you don't miss their night. If, uh, if all possible, uh, if you, if you make arrangements. Make arrangements because you don't want to cheat yourself. You need to hear the rest of these sermons. Mm. Amen. How many glad that we came to New Brunswick? Oh, yes. Three people, right? We got, we got three converts. <laughs> what you just got tonight. Notice how God starts using you. He may start using you in a different way. When I left that meeting with Brother Hagin, I started prophesying in rhyme. Can I be gut level honest with y'all? Gut level? Gut level? I've been persecuted more in the last nine months than I've been persecuted in 50 years. When you step up, to another level of anointing, yes. Satan will come at you. Oh, yeah. You don't have some thick hide. One guy on social media said, I'm going to call Homeland Security and have you locked up. <laughs> I'm just afraid for people. <laughs> They'll call you a crook, yeah. call you false prophet. Yeah. 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 But I believe it in Jesus that way. They even called him a devil. <laughs> But he called me son. Yes. Give the Lord one more shout. Yeah. 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 Nasal problem. We talked about the nose. Now, if your nose is plugged up, anybody got nasal problem? 
Anybody with nose problem? When I call you nosy, you just <laughs> come here, sister. I want to touch you. Your nose is going to burn. There's two polyps inside your nose causing the The sinuses to burn and plug up. You're healed now in Jesus' name. <laughs> you go home and blow your nose. <laughs> it got good. Yes, it got good. Yes, it is. She had a word of knowledge. Complimented what God was doing. It, all mine's clear. All mine's cluttered. Just checking. Pastor, come bail me out, brother. <laughs> you were a pastor, hand What do you think? Amen. Well, we've got a few more nights to go. we got uh, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night. Yes, amen. And we, I don't know, maybe we should go more, Brother Becker. Yeah. 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 You got excited about that, didn't you? <laughs> anyway, God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. We're looking forward to the uh, more services. I believe it's going to get better and better and better. God